Continuing the legacy of Father Lawrence Martin Janko, the Janko Foundation Fund honors individuals who have shown visionary leadership in the service of others. Through the annual Janko Awards, individuals are celebrated for the difference they're making in the lives of others in Appalachian, Ohio, through service. Father Jinko was the inspiration for the Jinko Awards. Um, Terry Anderson met him while they were both hostages, and Father Jinko always made sure everybody was okay, and he was looking out for everybody else in this group. You know, the people that we're honoring this year looked around in their communities and saw a niche where they could make a difference, and they took action. They didn't just sit back and say, oh, we have a problem. They said, did something about it. I don't know, I keep saying the word inspirational, but there's not, no other word I can think of that uh, explains how phenomenal the work that these people do. And sometimes it's just touching a small group of people, but that little bit of effort makes a difference in their lives. Dedicated to celebrating and preserving the history of Belpre, Ohio, Nancy Sams has grown the Belpre Historical Society Museum to become a community treasure and a reminder of the importance of knowing where we came from. My name is Nancy Sams and I am president of the Belpre Historical Society that maintains the uh, Farmer's Castle Museum Education Center. We appointed a committee to look into buildings that were available when there were none really except the building we had. So it was too small, so we thought, okay, we've got to add on, we've got to add another building. And now we have the new building, which we called the Annex, and we dedicated it to uh, a former mayor, Th Dick Thomas. This one family uh, donated $100,000. As time went on, the community matched that donation. That was just a wonderful gift, and, um, and that's the other thing I think that why people have an ownership in here. They've given maybe $10, $5. We've had, we had one student come in and give us a $5 bill, which was just like, wow, you know, because they want to see the museum. We still continue to get artifacts uh, from people and they bring things that are really great because they're from their families in this community. When the kids come and, and the parents come and they see what we have, they're realizing that this is really a gem, you know, and there's a lot of things here for people to learn from. We put education in the title of our museum so that people would realize that they can come here to get some education, they can come here to do research, and just, you know, it's just a place we can, and it's getting to be a place people can congregate now too because they can come and bring their meal and have a meeting and, and just work together with other people, so. It's, it's fun. I enjoy it. You can tell that, I guess. <laughs> Bill Crawford founded the Team Mojo Foundation in Columbiana County to help children in his area have access to a wide range of childhood experiences. Bill and Team Mojo are committed to helping kids shine. My name is Bill Crawford. I'm founder and executive director of Team Mojo Foundation. I had the uh, sort of epiphany, I guess you'd say, to start the foundation uh, six or seven years ago I was at a basketball camp with my two sons. I uh, got together with some some people in the know that had experience with uh, nonprofits and that sort of thing and uh, said let's go ahead and try to make this foundation for our local tri-state area that will help kids be able to participate in events like that basketball camp that may not otherwise be able to do so and that became sort of our mission state, statement right there. Now, one of our favorite things is music lessons uh, tutoring, summer camps, field camps, uh, our, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, uh, driver's ed, uh, you know, just about everything that uh, you know, K through 12 kids can get into. The more we do and the more awareness we get and, and the more exposure and the more we help kids, the more other organizations and individuals and, and uh, business leaders and community leaders want to be involved with us. They see the good that we're doing and they, uh, they really want, hey, how can we help out? It always comes back to the people, in, in, at least in our tri-state area, and probably you know, it's the same in all of Appalachia. It's just the close-knit families and the, the, the you know, community aspect and everybody working together and, and just how, how kind the people are and helpful and willing to volunteer and willing to help. And I hear that from other people as well. Beginning her work with Backpack Buddies in Lawrence County as a volunteer, 
Jody Hunt has grown the services of this all-volunteer organization so that far more children leave school for the weekend with food to carry them through until Monday. We get donations, they come in and we purchase food. Uh, usually every week we purchase food. We go and buy things, we bring them back here, we set it up, we have a sort of system that we use. We fill the bags and we put them in the crates that um, are here behind me. We put all of them in the crates. We load them up in our van every Thursday and then we deliver them to all the schools. We started with one school. Till this point where we're at 256 kids in 10 schools here in Lawrence County. And it just helps the parents, you know, know that if they are in need, we're here for their kids. We can help them with their food on the weekends. You know, and we also help them with an emergency pantry. If they do get in desperate need of food, we can help them along so they can get back on their feet. As I read about uh, the JNCO Award and what it really means and how it all got started, uh, it's amazing to me to think that we're sitting here today <laughs> and that I um, have this opportunity to talk to you guys and to share our story. When Margaret Fredericks retired from her years of teaching, she hadn't planned for impromptu meetings with students on her front porch to turn into the Boys and Girls Club of Washington County. Well, my name is Margaret Fredericks, and I have lived in Marietta for 30-some years. I really felt that I could contribute, and I wanted to. My life had been geared to be a working woman again, and uh, there I was. But when my husband retired, I sort of wanted to retire too. So then these kids decided I shouldn't retire completely. And as time went on, the kids just came. You don't, you know, how does it grow? It just grows. <laughs> and uh, therefore they had to have their homework done. That's what it was, an after school program. It has become a place where now there are about 200 members, uh, paying members that is, but more than that probably come for their homework help. And because we belong to the Boys and Girls Club, we have a beautiful program with all sorts of aids set up for having a place where they can get a snack, start their homework, and uh, play any kind of activity. Many students across Appalachian, Ohio can't complete their school assignments at home because they don't have the right technology or ability to connect to the Internet. In Meigs County, Iva Sisson found a way to help these students. Well, I was born in the area and have three children that went to school here and now have four grandchildren, two of which go to school in this area. The oldest one is the reason that I'm doing the computers. Um, she has a computer, but her internet access is really poor, so she would come out sometimes, do her homework on my computer when she couldn't get out. Um, and during conversations, she explained to me that there were students at the school that didn't have access and had a hard time getting their homework because now they're doing homework online. So I decided to take this project on and to make the students have a level playing field for all. We have got 245 students that now have access to a computer since last February. Every dime that we get, not one penny has gone to any expenses. Every dime we get goes to refurbishing and making sure those kids have what they need. It's gonna take a lot of cooperation from a lot of people, but we will do everything in our power to see that every kid that applies comes up with a computer. The award is something that I think is a pretty wonderful thing. Even though you're not doing it for any other reason, it's nice to know that it is appreciated and that people do care. That's very important. For Donna Sue Groves, a promise to her mother became the undertaking of a region. Beginning in her own Adams County, Donna Sue began what is now known across the United States and into Canada as the Quilt Barn Trail. I'm Donna Sue Groves. I grew up in West Virginia on the Elk River, which is Kanawha County outside of Charleston. I've lived in Adams County for the past 25 years and previously was a field rep for the Ohio Arts Council. 
when we moved to Adams County, Mother and I, there was a tobacco barn and I'd never seen one and I thought it was this ugly, ugly barn. It was just, there wasn't anything about it that had character other than the beautiful wood on it. So I joked and said, I know, I'll paint you a quilt square on it. That'll brighten it up. And I said, okay, this is my idea. Let's don't paint one, let's paint a bunch of them and let's create a driving trail and invite people to come to the county and they'll buy our quilts, they'll buy our pictures and they'll, they'll stop at our restaurants and they'll fill up on gas and we'll make money and they'll all go home and we'll still have a wonderful place to live. Where we are now is about 43 states, um, pro over 7,000 quilt squares that are known. I go from the computer to reading stories about an email somebody sent me. Donna, this quilt trail has saved my life. It has gotten me up off the couch, out of my chair. It has given me new friends to go paint with. It's given me a reason to look forward to tomorrow when I stayed in depression. You know, it's changed attitudes. It's given people something to focus on than that bad news on the television. And it shows us that we, if we can organize a quilt trail, we can come together to do something else that's positive for our community. So Appalachia to me, I'm proud. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so proud, I wouldn't wanna be anywhere else.